Funding for the program is provided by the Harry S. and Isabel C. Cameron Foundation and other contributors. It happens every year in San Miguel de Allende, an old colonial town in the hills of Guanajuato, near the very center of Mexico. The men, women, and children each year begin the Easter observance with a procession. This procession recalls those that began 450 years ago, when Christianity was first brought to the indigenous here. At midnight, two weeks before Easter Sunday, hundreds of people come from San Miguel to the sanctuary of Atotonilco to accompany an image of Jesus Christ as it is carried seven miles into town. There are three figures shrouded in silk scarves given by the faithful, with the figures of Christ and his mother Mary is Saint John. Saint John, the only apostle who remained with Christ, and observed his death from the foot of the cross. St. John also represents the people who are in the procession, who will accompany, observe, and relive Christ's trial, death, and resurrection during the next two weeks. The procession is organized and carried out by laymen. Their number grows to thousands as the images are carried to San Miguel. The shrouded images are carried through arches of flowers, the tradition carried over from Aztec processions. Tonight it is dark and cold. With the dawn, they enter San Miguel. The statues are unveiled. Rays of light, potencias, streaming from Christ's head, represent his divine human capabilities, memory, knowledge, and will. The rope halter foreshadows his death. Mexican religious art is characterized by grim and bloody realism that sometimes shocks the unwary. The turbulent history of Mexico has produced a Catholicism steeped in pain and suffering.
Lent began four weeks earlier in all the churches of San Miguel with the ceremony of the ashes, here placed by the pastor of the church of San Juan de Dios. Lent, Quaresma, begins on Ash Wednesday. Into current times, old women from the country try to keep ashes intact on their foreheads for the 40 days of Lent. They slept with little plates tied securely over the ashes. In Mexico, the Christianity of Western Europe, of Spain, blended into the existing indigenous culture. In his book, The Medieval Heritage of Mexico, Dr. Luis Vecman writes, Mexico is not Spain, nor is it exclusively composed of Indians. Yet in this culture of ours, a branch of Western culture with essential indigenous elements, the Indians' contribution is what has gradually created the outline of the authentically Mexican. The culture brought from Spain to Mexico in what regard God and the world was still very medieval. It was a world uh, which was conceived as a unity, as a unity, uh, and assumed two different aspects, a universal church uh, and a universal empire, a lay society and a religious society, and they were, they were in interconnected. Within Mexican life, dark and bright are mixed. Even within suffering, there is room for happiness. It is a paradox the Franciscan friars who settled this valley understood. In 1542, Friar Juan de San Miguel came here with Spanish soldiers and friendly Indians to establish a frontier outpost. The participation of the Indians was crucial. The Presidio San Miguel of the Chichimecas was to provide safety to settlers and to the caravans carrying silver to Mexico City from the rich mines of Zacatecas, safety from the roaming Indians of this desolate region. Believing the millennium was coming, the Franciscan friars came to prepare the Indians and to await the second coming of Christ. They brought new ideas to some of the Indian tribes who had long been subject to tribal wars of conquest and raids for sacrificial victims. The God-man Jesus Christ, the friars taught, had died on the cross to redeem fallen man. No more need die. But some inhabitants needed a miracle before they were converted. In Tlaxcaya, an incident gave them what they were looking for. In the fourth year after the arrival of the friars in this land, it rained very much, ruining the cornfields and causing many dwellings to collapse. Because of the devastating rains, one of the first processions in the New World took place to implore God's mercy. That day the rain stopped. It was a turning point in the Indians' acceptance of the Christian message. Immediately the Indians made many crosses, banners of saints and other ornaments to be used in processions. And forthwith the Indians of Mexico came to get patterns of them to fashion processional platforms of gold and feathers to adorn their churches, to make retables and ornaments to hold processions. Even then, not all tribes were responsive. San Miguel of the Chichimecas was attacked and burned to the ground in 1551. On this old map, heads indicate the place where two friars were killed by cruel Indians in the 1580s. Friar Francisco Doncel took in his company Friar Pedro de Burgos 
and all priest and servant of God. They left from the Villa of Celaya for that of San Miguel. And on going through a narrow pass, there fell upon them some pagan Chichimeca Indians, of those who abhor the Christian name, and with much cruelty they killed them with arrows. Tradition holds that one friar was carrying this image of Christ crucified, called the Lord of the Conquest, Señor de la Conquista, and that traces of the friar's blood can still be seen on the image. This Christ, the oldest image from San Miguel's long history, is surprisingly light. Made in the Indian manner of corn stalks and hemp and covered in orchid paste, made to be carried in processions. The Franciscan message took effect. Father Jose Luis Soto has spent several years cataloging the Franciscan archives in nearby Celaya, making documents available for study, including books of the Cofradías, lay organizations responsible for physical and spiritual works and arrangements for feast days and processions. Basically, the Franciscan spirituality, spirituality based on devotional sense of Christian life. You don't look at Christ as a mystery. You don't look at Christ as uh, something which is uh, far beyond, but. Uh, you feel Christ is close to you. He cries with you. He suffers with you. He consoles you. Early in Lent, on the eve of the feast of Señor de la Conquista, Javier Zavala conducts an hour of live radio commentary about events that will begin tonight with the traditional vigil of the dancers. The most important part of the celebration, though some ask if it is profane, not sacred, the most important part has been the 33 creeds. The dancers will spend the night in vigil singing and making offerings for the altar of Señor de la Conquista. The burning copal produces an incense that predates Christian worship in Mexico. Next morning, the pastor blesses them and their offerings and reminds them in his homily, La Conquista, La Conquista es individual. The conquest is within the single soul. back out of the church to show reverence. After the mass, music and dancing begin and will continue all day. Tent, the dancers watch the leader and copy his steps.
Some steps, like the Kapal blessing in the vigil, repeat the form of the cross, a symbol known and reverenced by the Indians before the coming of the friars. Inside the church, worshippers recite the 33 creeds, acts of faith honoring the 33 years of Christ's life. In the afternoon, a processional dance moves into the streets and atrium in front of the church of La Parroquia. The dance of the Ocho Locos, the Eight Crazies. The wounded bull, taunted like fallen man. In the early 18th century, San Miguel grew rapidly into an important colonial center, known as San Miguel el Grande. The buildings from that time reflect the rationalists' belief that social harmony could be promoted through balanced architecture and sound civic planning. churches of San Miguel balance the intellectual with the spiritual. In the period of the 18th century growth, many existing churches were enlarged and many new ones were established. Rich individuals like Don Tomás de la Canal who built this house were responsible for both secular and sacred buildings. Such builders were often influenced by energetic churchmen. A young priest named Luis Felipe Alfaro worked here between 1730 and 1740. This Calvario and the Via Crucis leading up to it are his inspiration. Alfaro was spiritual advisor to Josefa, the oldest daughter of the De La Canal family. Alfaro encouraged her desire to establish a convent for women like herself, who wished to spend their lives in the service of God. 18th century colonial Mexico was distanced from the intellectual forces that swept over Europe. The rulers of New Spain attempted to sequester it from the ideas of the European rationalists. Because they believed that the human intellect was the only route to knowledge, the rationalists were hostile to the supernatural and to the clergy. On Friday, two days before Palm Sunday, honor is paid to the sufferings of Mary beginning with Mass in the Church of the Oratorio. Long lines of people wait to confess their sins. The daytime fireworks seem strange at first. The blast traditionally demands for heaven's attention. The smoke, trails of prayers for health, for sight, for change of heart.
Pinacoteca Virreinal, an art museum in a former convent in Mexico City, holds a rich collection. Throughout Mexico, religious art flourished in the colonial period. A painting of Our Lady of the Sorrows is placed above an altar decorated with purple flowers and bitter fruit. The courtyard of San Miguel's convent of La Concepcion also has a new life. Owned by the national government, most of the convent is now an art center and school. Josefina Vasquez and Maria Williams grew up in San Miguel. Uh, on Friday, we venerate Our Lady of the Sorrows uh, by uh, building altars in the private homes and the same way with the public fountains. Uh, the neighborhood gets together and uh, build the altars in the fountains and then in the private homes anyone that has a picture of Our Lady of the Sorrows or a statue will build an altar and open the home to the public. They take the pictures of Mary home. Today, they will make altars in her honor. When it grows dark, everyone will be welcome to come and join them. Visitors and residents are preparing for Palm Sunday. As early as the fourth century, processions much like today's were held in Jerusalem. As Christ went down into Jerusalem, the crowds were moved to the depths of their hearts. Some spread cloaks in the road. Others began to cut branches from palm trees 
as Christ went down into Jerusalem for the last time. In 1740, after 10 years of active priestly life, Father Luis Felipe Alfaro left San Miguel to build the sanctuary of Atotonilco, seven miles from town. He brought with him the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Father Francisco Serrano sees many men and women who make the pilgrimage to Atotonilco. El Padre Alfaro, estoy seguro que ya conocía. Why did Friar Alfaro recommend penance? A certain Father Alfaro knew the Gospel account in which one day the apostles tried to expel a demon from a person and failed. Pero cuando se lo piden a Jesucristo, when they went to Christ. He did it, expelled the demon. Los apóstoles le preguntan, ¿por qué Why, asked the apostles, couldn't we do this? He responded to them, this kind of demon can only be cast out through prayer and penance. The walls, ceilings, and archways at Atotonilco are covered with paintings. Many remind the penitent of the reality of evil and sin. Just inside the entry, the devil is shown as he comes at the moment of death, still hoping to claim a soul. Christ himself was not spared temptation. Satan appealed to all the human desires of the flesh and the psyche, offering food, riches, power, and honor, pride. The Calvario Chapel at Atotonilco shows the mixture of richness and disrepair found in many churches in Mexico. In the early 1900s, a band of soldiers rode their horses into the chapel. The statue of the bad thief was shot to pieces. One way, perhaps, to rid the world of evil. Father Alfaro followed Christ's injunction to his apostles. Take up your cross and follow me. He returned to San Miguel each year and carried a heavy cross in a Holy Week procession. His cross is kept here with paintings showing the martyrdom suffered by the apostles. The side of the church of Atotonilco is a retreat area. Throughout the year, thousands of penitential pilgrims, men and women, choose to come here from all parts of Mexico to spend a week in spiritual reflection. Despite traditional machismo, the men of the procession subordinate themselves to the process of worship, becoming, like children in Josefa's nuns, brides of Christ. Those wearing veils are here for the first time. Yes, that's right. When we go from here, we're going to talk with everyone close to us and tell them this is a good thing. 
and yes, if they like to come and see it, bonito, this is for us por a holy place. This painting in the church of Antotonilco depicts Father Alfaro's procession in the 18th century. It was Alfaro who gave the events of Holy Week much of the form they follow today, 250 years later. On Wednesday of Holy Week, a recently revived Way of the Cross follows Father Alfaro's original route. The procession begins at the Oratorio and stops at each of the 14 stations in the streets. Each station depicts events of the journey of Jesus from the palace of Pilate to his entombment. These three crosses indicate the moment of Christ's death. The procession pauses at each of the stations and ends at the Calvario. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia, Señor es contigo. Bendita eres entre las mujeres y bendito el fruto de tu vientre, Jesús. All ages participate in the recreation of Father Alfaro's Way of the Cross. Thursday of Holy Week. The Mass of the Holy Eucharist recreates the Last Supper. The washing of the feet reminds worshipers of Christ's humility. This night he proclaimed his Mandamiento Nuevo. A new law I give unto you that you love one another as I love you. Sangre de la alianza nueva y eterna que será derramada por vosotros y por todos los hombres para el perdón de los pecados, haced esto en conmemoración mía. The ancient wooden clappers, the metraca, reminds everyone that no bells will toll. No mass will be said again until the sufferings are done. After the Mass of the Last Supper, the chalice holding the consecrated host, Christ present in the Eucharist, is placed in a special tabernacle, a monumento constructed for this occasion. The people in San Miguel follow the tradition of visiting seven churches this holy night. Mass of the Last Supper and the visits to the churches provide a bright interlude in Holy Week.
In a church patio are reminders that this is also the night when Christ is turned over to the civil authorities, betrayed by one of his own. Christ is imprisoned. The wound on his cheek is plain. The Judas kiss. Some men and women visiting churches recall when there were no services, no processions. Problems between the church and state in Mexico existed from the very beginning about matters of authority, spiritual and secular, and property. The church was extremely wealthy. No one would claim the church always used its riches well. There were abuses, excesses, and errors. But for 300 years, the church provided education, hospitals, all the social and spiritual services for a vast territory. In the 1920s, in a world marked by socialist conflict, Mexico experienced a struggle little known outside of its borders. President Plutarco Elias Calles began his own Mandamiento Nuevo, rigorously applying provisions of earlier constitutions that could in effect eliminate religious practice in Mexico. Calles' actions brought the divisions of the country out into the open. In response, the bishops ordered a cessation of public worship, a peaceful course. But some in Mexico felt that a show of arms was necessary. All these religious uh, services that we had, uh, they stopped completely between 1927 and the end of 1929, because there was the war of the Cristeros uh, fought between the government and a lot of the people of Mexico. They closed all the churches. Uh, they killed an awful lot of priests. They pray, a lot of the priests had to go out of the country. Some of them, they were hidden in houses, private homes. And at that time, if a baby was born, you had to find out where a priest was hidden so that he would baptize him. My mother and father got married in 29. And then when my mother arrived in San Miguel after their honeymoon, they still in the main square, there were four men hanging from the pillars of the Ardine. And uh, so uh, all this time, there were no, no ceremonies of any kind. Until uh, 1930, then, the churches begin to open, the priests begin to come back. The armed Cristeros movement that arose asserted the right of the people of Mexico to a spiritual as well as an earthly life. Their battle cry, Viva Cristo Rey. Slowly within the past decades, the processions have left the church atriums and gone back into the stone-covered streets. Today, Friday of Holy Week, three major processions take place. The first from San Juan de Dios honors Señor de la Columna, Christ at the Column, brought from Antotonilco two weeks earlier. On the morning of Good Friday 20 centuries ago, Christ was sent to be whipped by the authorities before his sentencing. Judas carries his bag with 30 pieces of silver, the fee for his betrayal. Mary follows her son. Here again, St. John represents all who stay with Christ. The way is strewn with manzanilla and other fragrant herbs and flowers. The 
The music, Songs of the Passion, was composed in the 19th century in San Miguel and is heard only here throughout Lent and Holy Week. As in the days of Josefa de la Canal, the cloistered nuns can't leave the convent of La Concepcion to go out to the procession, so their Lord is taken into them. It is noon in the atrium of La Parroquia in San Rafael. Barabas is freed. Pontius Pilate washes his hands. Christ is condemned. They did not understand. My kingdom, Christ has said, is not of this world. The second procession of the day begins as the participants accompany Christ on his way to death on the cross. The pastor of La Parroquia carries the same cross that Father Alfaro carried two and a half centuries ago. is heavy. During the procession, the pastor watches the struggles of the bad thief, the unrepentant sinner. From childhood, everyone from San Miguel knows the scene that is to come. The moment when Jesus of Nazareth lifts his head in recognition of his mother as she goes with him to the hill of death. To the hill of Calvary.
after the hour of the death of Christ, the service of the veneration of the cross begins. Suffering has its moment of acceptance. Mary now alone, La Soledad, is ready to follow the glass coffin. For many, Holy Week in San Miguel means the procession of the Holy Burial. More than a thousand people take part in the three hour long event. Senor Perez has been in charge for 27 years. Last year we had procession number 281. It's been 281 years for the procession to take place. It's very old. It is a funeral cortege, this procession. It's a holy burial. It's called Santo Entierro, holy burial. It's simulating Christ's funeral after he was brought down from the cross. From Holy Tuesday, I start fixing the framework where the Señor del Santo Entierro's glass case is mounted. A glass case that weighs a ton or more. That glass case on Holy Friday, at 5 p.m., it goes with the procession, carried by 36 men. My father, as a young man after I was born, he took part uh, carrying the, the coffin that it was extremely heavy with the, the body of our Lord. He was the one that used to take me and I start as a very young little girl, five years old. Then I moved to carry angels, they are moved to carry the other statues and I end up carrying our Lady of La Soledad. There have been generations of families that 
scary to take part in this occasion because it's, it's kind of a, a very beautiful thing to do. Following Christ's coffin come images of those who remained with Christ through his death. Mary, John, Mary Magdalene, and Joseph of Arimathea, and Nicodemus, who came forward to remove Christ's body from the cross and prepare it for burial. Placed apart from the procession is Peter, who denied Christ three times. The soldier's banner states, truly, this was the Son of God. Saturday of Holy Week in the afternoon, pent-up emotions find release in the bullfight. Saturday evening, Mary's friends show sympathy with their prayers and hymns at the Pesame or Wake service. Later, the Mass of the Resurrection takes place, the Misa de Gloria. Bendice este fuego nuevo, y haz que estas fiestas pascuales enciendan en nosotros el deseo del cielo. Para que podamos llegar con un espíritu renovado a la fiesta gloriosa de tu reino. Amen. For the people of San Miguel, it is time. Bendice este fuego nuevo y haz que estas fiestas pascuales. Out of the darkness of the tomb will come the light of the world. Para que podamos llegar con un espíritu renovado a la fiesta gloriosa de tu reino. The gift received and passed on. Person to person, one by one. Cristo ayer y hoy, principio y fin, alfa y omega. Suyo es el tiempo y la eternidad, a él la gloria y el poder por los siglos de los siglos. Funding for the program is provided by the Harry S. and Isabel C. Cameron Foundation and other contributors.